So uh, the point is to, you know, if you're take a, given a uh, X is a, say, a projective, smooth projective variety or a compact Keller manifold. Keller manifold. Uh, so then uh, the cohomology has some structure, and the question is to what extent does the cohomology? So the, the totally question is um, to recover. X from from the various structures on cohomology. Uh, of course, specifically there is a uh, that's a question. So what happens is if you have a compact scalar manifold, so you can look at the cohomology ring. which is, uh, you can look at hi of x with coefficients in z. So if it is of dimension d, this goes from 0, less than equal to i, less than equal to 2d, but d equal to dimension of x, the complex dimension of x. OK, so this uh, forms a ring. There is a cup product on this. It's a cup product ring, which is, uh, and then uh, Hodge theory uh, gives a structure Hodge, for instance, gives you, uh, you know, it gives some decomposition. I don't have to, I don't want to say it exactly because I'm not going to use it. Uh, but there is a decomposition. I just want to say that HK of XZ, uh, XC, it makes us a direct sum of HPQ X and P plus Q equal to K. And uh, with HPQ bar, there is a complex, there is a conjugation, and that's equal to HQP and so on. And you can put various other structures. So then there's a polarization, if it is, uh, I will not get that, a bilinear pairing on, um, on the cohomology coming from a choice of an ample line bundle arising from. Um, an embedding, if I assume that X is contained inside projective PN. Uh, anyway, since uh, let me not spend time on this, it's a, uh, so the, uh, what happens is classical totally is when X, uh, so, uh, so the point is that, uh, yeah. So uh, the classical Torelli theorem of uh, Torelli is that uh, if you take X and X dash or compact Riemann surfaces, and you have a, uh, and suppose, Phi from so basically you need to know which one h one of x z to h one of x z is a is a additive is a group of motion and uh, it uh, it preserves the this preserves the hot structure when you tensor it c. And uh, the polarization uh, plus cup product. So, so the H two XZ is Z, and H not XZ is Z. So there is nothing much on the, this thing. So the only non-trivial cohomology piece is H one XZ. So then uh, this says that X is isomorphic X dash. So basically, if you have a map of cohomology groups which preserves the hot structure and polarization coproduct, then it uh, gets a XS isomorphic to X dash. 
Okay, so uh, yeah. So then, uh, what happens is uh, the next step is was taken for K three surfaces. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a very good question, but uh, I think it's just x is isomorphic to x dash. I don't. Uh, it's possibly true, but I'm not. I I don't recall it right now. Okay, so I can. But I'll. Okay, so I, when I come to the K3 surfaces, that's what happens. And in fact, it uh, that was a very important point for us. <coughs> okay, so now. I think it should be induced by phi. I think phi should do this thing, yeah. But it induces back the map phi. Yeah, in, while coming, I was slightly worried about that point, but. OK, so now I move on to d equal to 2. And the theorem out here was done by Piatetsky, Shapiro, and And Shafarovich, probably the, the proof might have had some few gaps, but then it was fixed by many people. But not serious, I think. OK, so what's a K3 surface? X is a K3 surface. Uh, basically, it means it's a, the canonical bundle omega is, is, is trivial, and it's simply connected. So then, uh, the, basically, the non-trivial cohomology is H2, Xz, the middle di middle cohomology, which has an intersection pairing and the Hodge uh, isomorphism. Um, so, uh, <coughs> to in order to state the result, the, the decomposition of H2, so H2 Xc. It decomposes uh, H0, 2, direct sum H1, 1, direct sum H2, 0. And uh, these are one dimensional, and this is, I think, dimension 20. But uh, so what happens is uh, the, the intersection product, the intersection product, uh, it's a non degenerate. And of signature, the uh, Hodge index theorem says that it's of signature 1, comma n minus 1, that is 22 minus 1, 1, comma 21 on H2. But uh, the, anyway, that's, those particulars are not important. But I want to say, state a condition for which the theorem is true. That's what I want to say. So what happens is uh, inside uh, algebraic surfaces, so okay, so uh, so so inside an algebraic surface, we have what's called the neuron severi group, um, and which I will try to uh, state it di uh, in terms of cohomology classes. So what uh, you define n x the neuron severi classes is H one one of uh, x intersection H two x z. So these are the integral ones which are in the middle co in the one one classes, and uh, in some sense they should correspond to algebraic circles. So since it's dimension two, one knows this. So these are the ones coming from. This comes from uh, looking at uh, cycles associated to divisors from the classes cohomology classes attached to divisors. Because our Hodge, uh, so okay, so this is the algebraic classes. So now what we are going to assume is we are going to assume there is a map phi from uh, say h2, say x dash z 
to H two H Z. Ah, where X and X dash are two K three surfaces, which respects the Hodge and various structure, uh, respecting Hodge and intersection product. Then it gives you a map from NX to itself, NX dash to NX, right? Phi, phi sense NX dash to NX, okay? So this NX dash, as I said, is algebraic. This part is algebraic. This is algebraic cycles uh, coming from devices. So here, you have, so what's an algebraic cycle or coming from devices? It's basically the cohomology which consists of formal linear combination of Ni of Di, say Di are irreducible devices. So it's really uh, uh, the, the first chain class of these devices. But anyway, let me just, or you can think of it, uh, this, let's look at it as summation Ni Di where Di's are irreducible devices, and where these Ni's are integers. So that's what this Nx is going to consist of. Yeah, yeah, image under the cycle class. I think I've said that, right? Yeah, coming from homology classes attached to devices. Image under the cycle class map of the this thing. Right, so here you can talk about what are effective devices. Effective devices. Or uh, those for which uh, uh, these are summation ni di, where ni's are where do I go to zero? The ones which are in a sense physically consisting of devices, and so the condition is apart from so the theorem is that so the theorem of Piatrisky Shapiro and Shafirovich is that suppose if phi is a Hodge isometry. Oh, I have given a name. Phi is a Hodge isometry. And phi is effective. So then phi is induced. By a morphism. From x to x. Okay, so this is the effective, what's called the effective totally, like what Sujata asked whether in this case the map is induced by phi, right? And that's exactly what they say, that if you say it's effective, if you have a Hodge isometry which is effective, then it is. Why is this more stronger, more interesting than No, you, you actually get the map from knowing what it does on the cohomology. You're just saying that you get the map, if you know that uh, there is a map of homology groups, the cohomology groups which preserve the Hodge and uh, intersection product and which is effective. If you drop the effectivity hypothesis, okay, so let me say this is part one. Yeah, okay, phi is a Hodge isometry. Implies x is isomorphic to x dash. I mean, it will not be effective necessarily. In fact, there will be, uh, you can get automorphisms. See, these are basically uh, some kind of, you can get uh, what are called picard lefschetz transformations. I will come to it later, which uh, are not effective, but uh, which is, yeah. So there are, there are transformations we know. So if you take any uh, vector, see, for coming from Lie algebra, you can take what are these reflections corresponding to vectors of length minus two or plus two, whatever it is. So then they give you what are called picard lefschetz transformations, and uh, that will make this, uh, uh, they will not be effective, but they will be isometries, and they will satisfy the other things. Okay, so that is the uh, part which is this. 
Okay, so this is a, uh, the kind of prototype of uh, Torelli theorems which one is looking for is this piatetsky shapiro shafarovich kind of theorems. Okay, so now I want to come to So, I'd, so you would like to look at some Torelli theorems for elliptic surfaces. So what's a elliptic surface? So basically you are taking C is a uh, base curve. So you see it's a, a smooth projective curve. And uh, you're looking at a map x from x is a total space, so x is some variety, so pi is a map. So pi, so the generic, which satisfies this property, so the generic fiber is an elliptic curve. So generic fiber of uh, pi, so this is some, it's an elliptic curve. E over Q. The, gen, the function field of the underlying curve C. And of course, pi is flat, proper, dominant. I should have said this first. And the generic fiber is an elliptic curve. And uh, you also assume that I'm going to assume this as a section, pi as a section. Pi as a section. Say the zero section. One can. Well, this is just to think of it as a zero section, but uh, maps need not map this. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I, one can, uh, you can ask for similar theorems in this context for the second cohomology. But uh, see the interesting part. So the interesting part of the cohomology there are two interesting parts. Is a contribution from the neuron theory from the NSX, which sits uh, mapping into yeah, which sits inside H two X Z. And then uh, the orthogonal complement, which is in some sense uh, uh, the transcendental part. Uh, orthogonal complement in, I suppose, I think in H11 X of NSX, which is what's called the transcendental, transcendental cycles. I think this is, anyway, right now, again, I don't need this thing, but let me see that. Okay. It, it turns out that the H1 of the elliptic surface is the same as H1 of the curve, so, and H3 also. So basically the part which is, one has some idea is neuron severity. And what does neuron severity look like? So the neuron severity, so, so what happens is we have this elliptic surface, Maybe I should. But, okay. This is the elliptic surface. So the neuron severity, there are two types of uh, elements which go into the neuron severity. So the neuron severity consists of two types of uh, devices, one coming from sections. Okay. So, so there are all these sections which goes past this. And the sections, if I have a zero section in mind, is basically uh, sections the subgroup generated by sections corresponds to the model well group. Of the generic fiber of E or KC. Okay. And, oh sorry. Some field right now for the time being, I'll, okay, it will turn out to, I'll assume it will be finitely generated. 
or the prime fit. Yeah, but these theorems are more complex numbers, but uh, I, uh, yeah. yeah, when I come to state the theorem, I will state things properly. I just want to uh, uh, give an idea of what the neuron savory group looks like and what the problem with us. Okay, so this is one. So what happens is the neuron savory of at least say assume k is k bar algebraically close. So then the neuron savory of x over k bar. So uh, it has what is called the the trivial cycles. So this is sub set T of x bar, and the quotient is the model wave group of the generic frame. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just it's e over k. This is probably two over k. Okay. So what is so the, so there is a map from the neuron severity to the model well. So the point is this. What is this? This consists of so there are some singular fibers. So we can have some singular fibers, and these are this is a com. This is the one generated by a zero section and by irreducible components of single fibers, contribution coming from C, generated by irreducible components of single fibers. Okay. Right? <coughs> So what happens is, uh, see the point is there are these irreducible components of singular fiber. So if I want some kind of uh, um, uh, an isometry, so if I'm going to look at a map of phi, say from H2 of X dash Z to H2 of XZ, the point is, suppose if the model well group of this uh, generic fiber is trivial or small, you can't expect this uh, such a map in general to uh, determine the space x, because you know you might have some few singular fibers, and it can uh, the singular fibers one knows what the structure is, the isometry, so you don't really expect a map to have the singular uh, to expect to it to have the good properties which you uh, of uh, the conclusion of the piatrovsky shafferich kind of theorem. Okay, so of course the Torelli theorem for elliptic surface has been studied quite extensively. So I don't want to recount its history or whatever various things, but uh, one knows it is false. So you know, examples it's false. So Torelli on the nose is false. Torelli on the nose is false. So, of course, uh, there's a whole lot of theorems about trying to prove other kinds of Torellis, the infinitesimal Torelli and variational Torelli and such things. Okay, so so what, what is the problem? The problem, as I said, is that basically the cohomology of H2XZ, it consists of, in some sense, in many cases, it just is probably only the neuron severity. There are examples where you can see that the cohomology, the second cohomology is just algebraic cycles. The transcendental part is trivial. The transcendent part, of course, is a bit mysterious, so there can be cases, but the transcendent part is trivial. And if the model well group is trivial, then the second cohomology is basically going to be trivial. Then you don't, uh, trivial meaning, of course, it will have the, comp the contribution from the uh, irreducible components of the singular de devices, but that's not so much to, enough to determine the, the elliptic surface back. Okay, so, so what one does is that, uh, so you, if you, so now I'll try to say what the second motivation in some sense is. So the second motivation is we recall Tate conjecture. So what Tate conjecture is that suppose uh, say K is finally generated. Or it's prime field. The Tate isogeny conjecture proved by faultings. So I should say faultings, you know.
and you have A and B are abelian varieties. Defined over K. And if you have a, uh, so then the, the, you can look at the tech modules, TLA or uh, the tech modules. So this has an action of the Galois group, GK equal to Galois group. So acts on TLA. And then the, the, the theorem is that how, uh, so these are modules which are ZL. So you can look at TLA, TLB. Uh, so there's a map from, um, GK. Um, you can look at uh, homosis between the abelian varieties, and certainly they they'll give you they induce maps on the uh, of the tate cohomology groups, which are Galois equivariant, and uh, so you can tensor with ZL, and this is an isomorphism, right? So what's happening in the Tate story is that if you look at the just the L power uh, L torsion points or the L power N torsion points, you don't get an, any. It doesn't determine the abelian variety, the, such a maps. But you take the limit and you go to the ZL things, then you know that uh, by attaching all L power N torsion points to the abelian variety, so that kind of determines the, the thing. This is of course is also a Torelli theorem in some sense. This was. In, in fact, in spite, in some sense, by the totally. Okay, so then, uh, so then the idea is that, okay, you don't take the elliptic surface itself, so you'll have to enlarge it. So then, uh, so what you need to do is to enlarge your neuron severity of X by considering base changes. By considering uh, uh, larger extensions of, by considering extensions of, of the base field KC. But uh, we are working with curves, so if I basically any finite extension corresponds to a curve. So if I take LO or KC, it's a field, finite extension, finite separable. So this corresponds to a map B to C, and L equal to the function field of say, KB. Right? So if I take L as a finite extension, then the model well group becomes larger, or the generic fiber, and so then the neuron severity becomes larger, and uh, so then you hope to capture more of the more of what you want. And of course, just like that, you don't stop at any finite stage. You take the full, uh, all base changes together. So, okay, so this is uh, something uh, one had. I had this thing. So I should say uh, a bit of, uh, maybe Damo might be interested in the story. Uh, so, okay, so, so when I was in Montreal, long, long back, I did work on the birch Winnerton direct conjecture for uh, elliptic curves or elliptic, uh, so you take elliptic surfaces or finite fields. So the idea is to uh, give an estimate for sha, estimate the size of the Tate Shufferage group, sha of an elliptic curve E, uh, or, or function fields, and this corresponds to some statement, which uh, one is should estimate size of suppose the Brouwer group of the x where x is the the same. So this is a function field say, of the type K C. So where x is the uh, Elliptic surface, the corresponding elliptic surface of 
corresponding to E or KC. It's a regular minimal vessel. Okay, in that, what happens is this neuron severity group comes in. Uh, that was, uh, this. and uh, so I thought of this kind of uh, thing that I should look at all base changes, and uh, maybe there is some kind of Torelli theorem at that time. Uh, a couple of years later, I was again visiting Montreal, and then uh, there was this Quebec Vermont number theory seminar, which was being held at Vermont, and then I went for a Kislevsky was driving and I was the only other person. And we started discussing uh, what we are doing. And then I asked Hershey what uh, he was doing. And then he says, so this is the third motivation in some sense. But so what was he? So this is directly related in some sense to birch and dye conjecture. So, so he was working with the question of Zarin, Zarin's question. So, which is you take E, E dash, elliptic curves over Q, and suppose rank model will, or the model will group of E of K is equal to rank of the model wave group of E or E dash over K for all. Uh, number fields k, k or q finite. So does this imply E is isogenous to E dash? Okay. And then uh, I said, well, it looks like we are looking at a similar question. Instead of uh, elliptic curves for number fields, I was trying to look at uh, elliptic curves or function fields, and the neurons are very is like the model wave group except for this thing. But then I was putting the added thing that it should preserve the inner product. That is, so, the, so I, whatever theorem I'm going to say, which is there, I don't know the version over number fields yet. Okay, but, so I can't still uh, hope to answer Zarin's question over function fields either, because that seems stronger. But I can say it with some kind of added assumption. Okay, so that is the, uh, kind of. So it was very strange. We both of us were going and turned out that we are kind of looking at the same question. But then I thought some of them were going made enough progress for number field case, so I stopped thinking about it. But okay. So, so the, what I'm going to say is all joint work with Subramanian. I should have mentioned it at the beginning. Uh, so what? Uh, so now I'm going to do thing. So I'm going to look at uh, elliptic surface X or C, and uh, maybe two two such elliptic surfaces X and X dash or C. So these are X and X dash of elliptic surfaces. Maybe let me just. Ah, I forgot to mention one important assumption on the elliptic surface. As I said, of course, it has a section. Uh, I want to say that these are not potentially isotropic. Basically, uh, this means that the J invariant of E, the, the, the generic fiber, it doesn't belong to K. K bar, what is? It's not algebraic. This. So K is a finitely generated. So K is finitely generated over its base field, over its finite. I think I can extend it to arbitrary fields, at least for characteristic zero, maybe complex numbers, but I don't want to talk about it right now. Or its prime field. Yeah, and the main reason for this is. Uh, I need to use state conjectures at one point. I need to use state. Oh. 
validity of state conjecture. Okay, so that or Yeah, so the other, I also, okay, so let me assume also, for, to, for simplicity, I will, uh, okay, I still need some work to do before I set up the theorem. Uh, I'll assume the vibration pi x to c is semi-stable. Uh, semi-stable vibration. Uh, so basically, any one knows that any elliptic curve potentially has semi-stable reduction, and that's what allows us to say that it's a semi-stable vibration. Uh, uh, so what what does this mean? Uh, it means uh, see there is a so so let me say this so there is a Cordero neuron classification of singular fibers. And so, in terms of uh, what happens is uh, the irreducible components of the singular fibers, uh, uh, you know, their contribution is like uh, they can be, uh, in terms of Cordero neuron, it's some one, two, and three, and four. Oh. But what we want is that the singular fibers are of type 1n. These are the singular fibers. I will say why I need this of type 1n. Um, so which means that it's a, it's a bouquet of curves like this. So each of these are is a isomorphic to P1 and self-intersection uh, with intersection, this irreducible components, say V0, V1, V2, and so on. So this Vi square is equal to minus 2. Self-intersection minus 2, oh, because as I said, the intersection pairing is there, so the self-intersections are minus 2. Okay, and Vi, Vj equal to 1. Vi, Vi plus 1 equal to 1. Can, go around cyclically, uh, so this will be 1 and minus 1. There are n components in the thing. If I go up, this is minus 1 also. Okay, so, uh, okay, the, the, this is what I want. The reason I want this is the following. See, at the level of model wave groups or the neuron, what happens is if I have an extension k is contained inside L, so then I know that the model will group of an elliptic curve of k is, uh, I can consider it as sections on L, so it's contained in model will group of E over L. And then I can talk about uh, extending if I want uh, inner product out here, which is there. But in this case, So that is one, and I should also assume about the elliptic surface. So the x over c is, uh, or is what is called x is x is regular, and uh, this map phi is it's a, it's relatively minimal. So this is what goes into the properties of the neuron model for the generic fiber, that uh, the neuron model is got from such a regular relative model, minimal surface by removing all the singular points of the fibers. So, uh, so then, of course, this is known to be unique, known to be unique. And what does relatively minimal say is that there are no uh, curves of self-intersection minus one along the fibers. Okay. Right. So, 
So in order to set up the notation, I need to, so I have this x to c, and I base change by b. So this is, so I can take what is called the, the product x cross b over c. So, but this is not the regular minimal model. So one has to do some various process to get the regular minimal model. So what I will, so this is my b, so I will let x b be the, oh sorry, x smaller b be the regular minimal model for the elliptic curve E over the base field K. As I said, it's uniquely defined and we have this. Okay. So the fact, which requires a proof, and yeah, it's a sticky, it's not so, this thing, but anyway. When x is semi-simple, uh, when x, is, x to c is semi-stable, So then, uh, and b to c is any map. So then there exists a morphism. Then there exists a map a morphism, actual map. So which I will again continue to denote from b, from x b to x. Maybe I, okay. Well, or maybe I should. Okay, let's call it. Um, SB over time. Uh, yeah. Well, B is any map from base chain. Okay, the point is when X is to C is not semi stable, okay, then there need not be a map. So you can have a, a, this potentially good reduction and you can base change and the minimal regular model, the good reduction, it, can, it will have good reduction. And in which case, you, you cannot expect a map. There should not be a map. Okay, so this map actually exists. Only when, so for the semi stable case, of course, it always exists because. Okay. So I need this map in order to state the hypothesis. So okay, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll continue to denote it by B, if you don't mind. So then what happens is, because there is a map, and this is of degree, so this map is from the degree is equal to the degree of the base curve V, so then I can look at the intersection product Px. It satisfies degree B times xy. This is from intersection theory, once, once you have a map like this, which is quasi-finite and of some degree some some funny, some degree which is there, then this is follows from intersection theory of surfaces that such a map is there on NSX on NSX. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that will. Yeah. So that will be a map from, of course, XB actually in this case will turn out to be, in this case what happens is uh, when it is semi-stable, this is XB is really the minimal desingularization of this. One of the facts which goes into this is that if you take a minimal regular model, uh, if you take a minimal Weierstrass equation uh, for a elliptic curve and it's a semi-stable case, and if you consider it over any larger field, that minimal Weierstrass equation tends still continues to be a minimal wear stress equation. Okay. So that, that is true in the semi-stable case. So then you can see that this is really the minimal desingularization. And because this map, so there is a map from here to, uh, sorry, this x. So there's a map. Yeah, so this was a kind of a very confusing sticky point for, let's see. Okay, so then, uh, so I say what's a universal Torelli data? So the universal Torelli data is the, 
uh, is this collection of NSXBs as uh, B from B to C ranges over all finite separable maps. And maybe I'll assume that the degree of B, uh, P does not divide, the characteristic of P does not divide degree of P. Okay. So, the, by, so the, my, this theorem is valid over any characteristics. It's not necessarily over characteristic zero. Uh, that's uh, the same error that usual Torelli theorems are over characteristic zero. Okay. And um, equipped, so then you have, uh, so, so you have this NS, NSXB, which is, so this has an intersection pairing. So NSXB has an, so, so there is an intersection pairing on, uh, on NSXB. Okay. And uh, so I have this pullback maps. And this is equipped with the pullback maps. Okay, so that's uh, and which satisfies the this. Okay, so that's a uh, that's what I will call it's uh, universal Torelli data. So I consider the collection of all non necessary groups and uh, equipped with the pullback maps which sends from NSX to, so there's this map NSX to NSXB, which satisfies this. This is B upper star. Okay, so in other words, uh, you can look at the Picard group, which is what is the algebraic, the neuron severity. So you're taking a line bundle and you're pulling it back. That's the. Okay. So now I'm going to ask for, so what's a, if I'm, if I'm given two, you know, so I'm given two elliptic surfaces, x to c, x dash to c, and uh, I have an, a, an isometry, say capital phi of universal Torelli data. So this means that uh, this amounts to saying for each B, so you have a map phi B from NSX B uh, to NSX dash B, and which is compatible with all the compatible with all the pullback maps. Compatible with intersection. This is an isometry. Pull back, and it's an isometry, right? Okay. So as I said, somehow uh, I had I had this in mind when uh, maybe more than 20 years back at Montreal. But the point came after looking at the Piaget-Sakis Shapiro Shapiro H theorem that what you need to do is to assume effectivity plus it is effective. Okay, so, so then, uh, so, so this is the theorem. Uh, uh, I should assume also it's all semi-stable for the, I don't have to assume really semi-stable, I can work with vibrations which are all semi-stable, base changes, but uh, okay, that's not the same. So then, uh, phi comes, phi arises from the isomorphism. Isomorphism of uh, x to x dash to theta. Yeah, so that's a 
what when you're saying. See, the point is I'm having really a map of neuron severity groups which are missing, but when you, when you keep expanding the neuron severity groups, this keeps getting larger. So it's possible that there are maps, you know, there are more isometries. But uh, if they are compatible with all base changes, then what you're only saying is it actually comes from a map of surfaces, isomorphic surfaces. And you can drop the effectivity hypothesis and uh, say that X is dropping effectivity, you will get X is isomorphic to X dash. And uh, okay, so that is one. I, I'll also say. Uh, so that's theorem one. Theorem two. Drop effectivity. Hypothesis and uh, get exercise more to s dash or c. Uh, so theorem three, I'll uh, just say you can say what's a uh, group of one can describe. Oh, I don't know whether I'll have the time. I don't think I have the time. The group uh, um, universal isometries, automorphisms. Universal isometries, automorphism, auto, automorphisms of X to C. So that's uh, that has a very simple description. Okay. So maybe I have only some five, ten minutes left. How much time? Five minutes or? Oh, seven, seven minutes left. My God, oh, that's a countdown. I was just wondering. <laughs> okay, great. So maybe I'll just state what are the main points in proof, which is there. I should, uh, so as I said, uh, I, so the, so the neuron severity, so let's, uh, I will not be very precise, I'll just give an idea. So, so there is this, what is called the trivial cycles, Tx, and the quotient is a model wave group. Okay. So the torsion of E or Kc uh, is given by elements x in the neuron severity so that uh, some n times x lands inside the trivial cycle model of Tx. So you just take the, the, the torsion closure of that and go model of Tx. Okay. So uh, if I know that uh, my phi sends Tx to Tx, Okay, so if I know, if if you know, phi preserves the trivial the thing. See, see that is not clear. I said T X contains a zero section. I don't even know that a section goes to a section under this symmetry. Okay, so that's not clear, and also that the vertical components go to vertical components. So both are not clear. Okay. So if I know P, phi preserves Tx, then can appeal, can appeal to Tate conjecture, the fact about compatible with various uh, base changes will, uh, will basically imply that it's Alva compatible. So you can apply to Tate, the torsion is captured, which will, and say that E, over Kc is isogenous to E dash over Kc. Okay, so so I have to know one this. Okay. Because this. Uh, 
right? Okay, so now what the way to proceed is that because it comes from, uh, see, the tape conjecture, looking at just the elliptic part, the L torsion and various things, only gives an isogeny. It never tells you that the, the elliptic curves are isomorphic. So you have to basically use the fact that our phi comes from the full neuron severity. So in characteristic zero, for instance, you can use the fact that for, uh, because it's an isomorphism of neuron severities, uh, you will get an uh, isogeny which, uh, for every prime L, you will get an isogeny which has no L kernel. Uh, and from there, you can conclude that E is isomorphic to E dash. So E is isomorphic to E dash. So that means, basically, this, this implies that X is isomorphic to X dash. Okay. Uh, so this is, a, this is the, requires a global argument. Okay, either you have to work with all primes L for, uh, you know, it's a very, I think it's kind of, uh, or in characteristic P, uh, so in positive characteristics, there's other argument also. So what happens is this requires uh, one to identify the singular fibers. And uh, kind of uh, the same argument, but uh, you know, because there's, uh, uh, the point is that you know, if you have, uh, if if you know these elliptic curves are isogenous, then and if the singular fibers are equal, then this would automatically force E is isomorphic to E dash. The elliptic surfaces have to be isomorphic, because you are going model on isogeny. And that isogeny will, uh, so the isogeny changes, I n uh, can go to either I n d or I of n by d. But, uh, but it, so, so there cannot be an identification. So if you use this, then you will get that E is isomorphic to E. Okay, so that's the second part. So the third part is that, uh, oh my god, I still, okay. So from here, you, so now, I have phi is a kind of self map of the universal Torelli data of x to universal Torelli data of x dash. Okay. So first what I show is that one shows that phi, uh, so now I have got the non-effectivity theorem I have got from this, that x is isomorphic to x dash. But I want to get the effectivity theorem. So what uh, you get to see is that phi uh, is you can show phi up to up to up to a map coming from uh, from up to some Hollis maps, up to morphisms, translations, and other things. You can say that phi restricted to the trivial cycles T X is identity. Okay, and from here there is a trick. This. Uh, so there's an independent map. Uh, so what happens is, so you have an isometry, universal isometry, which you know f restricted to the the vertical fibers. That is, uh, the irreducible, the singular fibers is identity for that contribution. Then this implies phi is identity. Okay. So that's the fourth step. Okay, so what here, we use base changes. So this breaks up first, I show that fiber goes to, fiber goes to multiple of fiber. So the fiber is the only one, when I pull back by a map of degree D, it just becomes D times the fiber. So I use divisibility to do that, and just a few minutes. And from there, I can uh, say that uh, it preserves the singular fibers. When I use effectivity, if I use effective, so here when I use effective plus effective, and say sections goes to sections, and on the Tx, it sends the minus irreducible components uh, to irreducible components. 
So I can use effective to say that. So for that, I'll have to uh, uh, describe sections in terms of algebraic data so that uh, I can say that effective sections go to effective sections. And since I know fibers go to multiple of fiber and other things, I can say that. And then uh, there's a trick out here. I just don't have time to say this, but there is a very uh, interesting uh, group theory out here which is going on, which is uh, representations of the affine while group. And uh, uh, so the isometries which you have coming from the picard lefschetz transformation, I have not defined what the picard lefschetz are told. They generate what is called the affine while group. And you, have, you get some very interesting uh, representations of the affine while group. It's like saying I have a map from SN to SND and from S, the symmetry group in SND. So I have homosomes so that uh, if I go from here to here, so this composite homosome is just this uh, composition of these two homos. And that's given by uh, just knowing what the, uh, how the singular structure, how this XB is constructed from X. So you, there's a, you know, it's a classically, I, 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 don't, I have not seen this homosomes which are in the classical language, but these are very, one can write it down in terms of transpositions. Okay. That's a part which, but I'm not, I, sorry, I don't have time to get into that. I'll stop here. You want the trick? <laughs> okay. The trick is to, uh, now you have to use the fact that uh, the, the, what is called the narrow model whale group, E naught K, these are the sections which pass through the identity component of all the singular fibers. Okay. So what one has to say is that, uh, uh, suppose, so basically, so this is what I need to say. I look at some u in e naught of k, right? And I look at u dash inside uh, e naught of say k bar, so that n times u dash equal to u. Uh, this, just a minute. Yeah, so, so there exists some n, some, so if n is sufficiently large, so this implies u dash cannot be e naught of k bar. Okay. So this, this n is basically the uh, kind of index of, uh, anyway, this is what it is. So if n is sufficiently large, u dash cannot be, this is fairly one can, use some Galois theory. So what happens is if n is sufficiently large, and if it is, uh, if, uh, okay, so this is implied, so, so let me say this other way, either this way, or let me say if u dash belongs to e naught of k bar, this implies u dash belongs to e naught of k, e k. And this is gives you the bond. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I don't need this. So if you take n times u dash is u, if u dash is in e naught of k bar, then u dash belongs to e of k. So once you have this, uh, uh, then you can get this, and from here you can get that section. So that part is, yes. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, follows from the compatibility. I mean, that's for just one prime. Maybe you could like assume the hypothesis. One prime meaning uh, one L. One L. One L. Yeah, but uh, you know the point is I need, see I I haven't said uh, uh, see I need to say that uh, E is isomorphic to E dash. 
So that gives me only an isogeny, the Tate conjecture. Use of Tate conjecture just gives me an isogeny, and I have no way of going from there to a Honest map. Yeah, so, the, so it was, so it's a bit of a thing. You have to, uh, first of all, somehow show that the surfaces are isomorphic. And then, uh, because it's isomorphic, it's a self map, then I can compose phi with itself. And because then, you know, then I have, I can look at phi squared, and I know this, uh, the geometry of the singular fibers, it's all, you know, it can either reflect or do something. So phi squared will become identity. But on the other hand, phi is compatible with uh, the Galois action. So on the look at locally, phi is upper triangular because the mu L is, you know, in the Tate thing, the mu L is on the semi-stable vibration. There is a GK invariant. It always splits as a. There is a GK invariant submodule, rank one submodule for a semi-stable. You know, locally, locally, and that will say that phi squared is kind of identity. Uh, and so that will kind of imply that some put, put some restrictions on phi, and then I use the fact that torsion subjects onto every singular component to say that uh, it phi restricted T X is identity. So it's a why do I say that? Why do I assume that? No, as I said, I need a map. From X B to X, in order to have this hypothesis to do that. If I, I, otherwise, I don't. That is, if X has potentially good reduction, then there are some base changes for which there is no map. And then I can't talk about B upper star X and B upper star Y. So there is no map, so I can't talk about that. But uh, but I don't. Uh, I can always work with. Uh, I can go to. A, Look at the class of semi-stable base changes for both the things, common things, and then I can work with the hypothesis. But uh, if I know there is an isomorphism there, then I can conclude that the underlying elliptic curves and the map descends. So I can extend the map to any uh, this theorem to uh, arbitrary families, not necessarily semi-stable. But uh, the hypothesis has to be that once you look at the common set of semi-stable base changes, and from that this this set of conditions should hold. Because you know, semi-stable base changes are different. You know, it's a local question, which is that. That can be done. Yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Does it simplify, or do you have a different perspective if you take your base curve also to be an elliptic? No, it doesn't. By the way, so I should say one small remark which I should have made. If you take a family of elliptic surfaces, then the neuron severity of the generic fiber by some Hilbert standard Hilbert irreducibility type of uh, thing is uh, isomorphic to uh, uh, infinitely many specializations of the neuron severities of individual things. So clearly the, the theorem is false at any single neuron severity. Uh, at any single neuron severity, because if you take any family of elliptic surfaces, it gives you counterexamples for an isometry. So the point, so the point with all this Torelli or Tate kind of theorems is the Torelli, you know, either you need some Hodge theory complex transcendental methods in order to get this thing, which is what is happening in complex geometry, or like Tate conjecture, you consider you have to put this Galois equivalence. You consider all extensions and work with that. At a purely algebraic level, it doesn't work. You have to take, you know, you have to bring the Galois full Galois group into play if you want to recover. So that's a. At finite levels, it does fail. With your permission. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I should say what the status for function fields is that. Yeah. 
So the birth Sanitarian Dyke conjecture was uh, converted to what's called the Artin-Tate conjecture uh, for elliptic surfaces, where the yeah, so the role of the model well group is given by the neuron severity. Okay, so then the Brouwer group is stands for something, and then the the period is some mysterious part, and that's what that was one of the things which I did in Montreal long back a suggestion of this. And so this uh, some of this neuron severity. So what? Uh, yeah, it can kind of natural, but. But there the point is that if you know the finiteness of the tate shafarevich group, then the birth and entire conjecture follows. But the finiteness of the tate shafarevich or the Brouwer group is not known, and that's probably the first major obstacle in the birth and entire. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay.